Yo, if this is your first time here, welcome. If you did before, welcome back. Today I'm going to be running over the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro PC and PlayStation controller. So this is a bit of a weird one. I've had a couple of comments asking on my other videos if I could review this controller and have a look through it and compare it to some of the other ones. So if you are the guy that left a comment on one of my last videos, YouTube's been doing this thing where it like tells you that you've got a notification, you go into the video and you kind of see it. But I saw somebody mention the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro controller. I couldn't find the comment. So if this is you, I hope that you can see this and you see me reviewing it for you. Plus, I am addicted to controllers. As you probably know, my whole channel is full of them. So I couldn't help myself buying another one. I was slightly dubious when I looked into it because I thought, well, is it just a gimmick on the kind of modular swappable side? And it was quite expensive and Thrustmaster gear in the past, I've just kind of shunned off because I knew that this was their first dip of the toe into the controller world. But I'll get onto all the details, all the stuff that I think about it. I'll do a bit of an unboxing, tell you what's in the box, whether I think it's worth the price, run through the features, and I. So uh, I think at time of recording, we're like 910 subs now, so quickly approaching a thousand. Thanks so much if you are watching my other videos and if you are already subbed. If you aren't, just take a little second to click that sub button. I think only 4% of my viewers currently are subbed, so it just takes one minute and it's free and it helps me out loads. So if you do get anything from this video or any of other ones, please click that sub button. It means a lot to me. Press like, leave a comment. Thanks a lot. Anyway, I won't waste any more time. Let's get to it. So, this is the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro controller. This is Thrustmaster's first Pro controller and first kind of dip of their toe into the Pro controller world. Thrustmaster have had in the past some extremely expensive and high-end gear by way of racing wheels and so on. And this particular one has a modular design that allows you to change out the sticks change out the directional pads, the grips, the triggers, which is probably one of the main draws for it. Now, I will get onto it later on, but I kind of feel like being able to change them is good, but having to change them is bad. And I don't know if this is, you know, a good or a bad thing. I'll go into a lot of this detail later on, but what it does allow you to do is swap out all of these little thumbsticks and whatever else to get a whole bunch of other unique ones for depending on the games that you're playing, the style of your setup and so on, which is quite a cool design. But that's basically what makes it so unique at the moment and gives it that particular price point as there's no really any other controllers that will allow you to have that level of modular customizability. Customizability? Go with that. So first, it's one of the weirdest prices for a controller I've ever seen, right? So stock price, if you just type in Thrustmaster eSwap Pro Controller and you get this one, not the Pro X, the PS1 with the PC as well, it comes up at about 150 quid. I managed to find a random dodgy looking website that didn't look like it was actually going to come with this for 100 quid. So I, that was strange, so anywhere between 100 and 150. I've linked the Amazon link below for this and it is at 125 quid. So whenever I'm making reference to value for money, 125 quid is the price point that I'm gonna be making reference to, just so you know. So the top level specs, it has T-Mod and a hot swap technology that lets you switch out parts for other parts of the controller, i.e. in the analog sticks, the triggers, the grips, just about everything apart from one little section which we'll get into later on, which I would love to be able to change. It is a wired controller, so you don't have to worry about input lag. It comes with a beautiful braided cable that's a nice kind of white and black look. It also clips in super well on the back. It is micro USB, but it's, it's got these little clips on the side that keep it in in the entire time, which is a nice little thing, so it's never going to fall out, which is cool. But yeah, wired, so no input lag, or next to no input lag. It has precise tactical mechanical field type buttons, which are beautiful. I'll get onto them later on. Nice though, very nice to play with. It has four ergonomically placed and remappable buttons on the bottom, here and here and here and here and here. It has dedicated PC software that allows you to remap all the buttons, change things like sensitivity, the vibration level, and so on and so forth. And it weighs in at 848 grams, which is a little bit beefier than some of the other controllers in the market at this price point. Some of the other pro controllers, that's kind of it. Anything else in the top level specs? No, not really. I'll show you what you get in the box. There isn't really a huge amount that you do get in the box. It's got a nice little cover over the front of this. The box is pretty premium packaging with a nice bit of foam on it and whatever. You only get the controller, the instructions, and the cable in there. But it's all nice premium packaging. If you're one of the people who really pays attention to packaging, then fine, I'll show it on the screen so you can have a look. But yeah, basically we just care about the bones of the, of the controller rather than the packaging. But so with all that stuff out of the way, here's my take on it. I've played Warzone, Far Cry, Rocket League, and a little bit Mortal Kombat on this. I've put roughly 100 hours into the controller, which isn't a huge amount, but it's kind of enough to warrant a review on it and to give my take on whether I think it's worth the cash, especially when I have done and reviewed multiple other controllers like the Razor Wolverine Ultimate, the 
Razer Caillou, whatever it's called, the Razer controllers, normal Xbox, DualShock, so on and so forth. So I'm in good stead to be able to give an opinion on it at the very minimum. And playing those types of games means I've had the FPS, fighting, driving, whatever. I've had a look at all different types of it and what it's good for and what it's maybe not so good for. So we'll get the looks first. It's a nice looking controller, you know? It's nothing ridiculously fancy. Shape-wise, it looks pretty premium. Generally, it looks like a Thrustmaster product. It's nothing ridiculously special. However, it does look pretty good and it'll fit into any setup that way. It's nothing crazy standout. It's just kind of black. The only thing with the look is that obviously, because it being modular, you can pick up hundreds and hundreds of third-party modular sections that change the look of this, which are really, really nice in a lot of cases. So it's bog standard look. Not amazing, but you can really switch it up with some of the modular parts. Feel. It's a beefy controller. It's a very, very beefy controller. If you have small hands, you are maybe going to struggle with this. I'll get onto these buttons later on, but you might struggle a little bit. I have got very large hands, as I have mentioned in my previous ones, and, you know, I'm at full extension. When I'm holding this, I'm at kind of full extension to the edge of the triggers from here. These are quite far away. So things you can swap, you can swap around, for example, the D-pad and the sticks here. However, there's still quite a long stretch between here and here. So if you have got small hands, uh, it might take a little bit while to get used to. I can imagine you will manage, but it's probably going to be a little bit of a struggle for you. But the rest of the feel, it's quite nice. The weight, although it is more weighty than some of the other ones in this category, you don't feel the weight and the grips are pretty nice. Doesn't get too sweaty and the grips are all right. It doesn't get too sweaty in the hands overall. And yeah, so the feel, the plastic's okay. It's not the most premium plastic I've ever seen, but it's all right. Everything else is just kind of plastic. The stuff that the buttons and the triggers and stuff are made out of, that's a lot more premium but the normal plastic casing on the shell and on the back is just kind of bog standard plastic. Not 125 quid's worth of plastic. I wouldn't say, but I could be wrong. Now, getting to the, probably the biggest selling point of this is the modular part of this. Now, at first when I saw it, I thought maybe it's a gimmick, right? So you can swap the stuff out and I thought, aye, that's actually quite good. And so you can change what you want, change the look of it. Maybe you'll only do that once. And one of the biggest draws is, I guess, if you've had controllers in the past that have broken and you've had analog stick drift and so on, rather than having to replace the whole controller, you can re just replace the module. Now, the issue with that, I kind of feel, is that everywhere I've been looking, everybody says that these are good. However, they do tend, there is a lot of cases of people saying that they go after a few months. And now, I feel like, is it worth buying a controller where you can't swap these out that's going to last longer than one where you are able to swap them? I don't know. So I've played a ton of hours. I have no stick drift yet. You can obviously change the dead zone to make sure that you don't get it. The stick clicks feel really good. But the thing that annoys me is that all of this is modular. So like you can change the triggers, you can change the bumpers, you can change these round to wherever you want them. But the buttons up here, you can't move them. Why? I mean, I feel like that would have just been the way to go because then you could change all four and you could put it to whatever position you wanted because even if you it is modular say you get a nice looking stack of them from a third party supplier and they're all different colors and stuff you make it look really nice and then suddenly this one you kind of change this stays bog standard i feel like it's a wee bit of a cop out and if there was to be another one i would think that that's one thing that probably should change so that you can change the buttons to something a bit nicer or even move them in which case because if i could move this analog stick up here, like I said before, big hands. I'd probably prefer that, I think, is what it is. As for changing them, there's a little tool that you can use that you just pop into the analog stick here, I'll put it on screen, where you can flick it out, where there isn't one for the analog stick. There's little screws on the bottom of these triggers. These ones don't have the trigger stops. This particular one doesn't have the trigger stops, but there is gaps for it, so they're clearly using the same parts. But as far as modular goes, I'll leave a couple of links to places where you can buy sections for it, because you can really spice them up and make them look ridiculously nice. And yeah, the grips come off. The grips change so you can swap out the grips if they get worn away or whatever. Grips, modular sections, bumpers. Basically, you can change it all if you need to, if something breaks or something goes wrong. So that might be a selling point for you. Probably wouldn't be for me as I am addicted to controllers, so I just buy another one. However, if that's something that interests you, it is very good stuff. Piss easy to change and the stuff is relatively cheap, especially if you're using third party suppliers. Now, the triggers. These are hands down by an absolute mile. The nicest triggers I've ever used on a controller, whether it be the Kaiju, whether it be the Wolverine, any of the Wolverines, V2, V1, DualShock, whatever. These are the nicest triggers and bumpers I've ever had on any controller. This particular one doesn't have the stops, but you can get different ones that have a little stop in them. These ones don't, so if you're used to having trigger stops, it might be something that you might think about getting the X-Pro one or a different set of triggers for this. But as it stands, if you're used to using normal triggers and bumpers, these are beautiful. I don't know what it is about them. It's the sound, the feel, where they sit. They're just 
ridiculously accurate. You can also change the sensitivity of them in the Thrust Mapper app as well. And that's all I can say. And that kind of leads me on to the buttons as well. Compared to any controller in this price range, this smokes it. The buttons just feel amazing. They're that kind of tactical, clicky button style, and they just feel so good. So they, if you ever had any kind of feel about the plastic not being as good as it could be, or the grips not being as good, or the modular being a gimmick, the buttons alone are enough to make me want to buy this controller and tell you that you should probably have it because it is super nice. You can see there's quite a lot of throw on the triggers. So like I say, if, that, if you're used to having the uh, trigger stops, you might want to get another one or get a different set of triggers for it or just get another controller. It is super precise for first person shooters. The movements felt like I was bang on the whole time. The movement in, the, in them isn't very far, but you can change in the app the dead zone sensitivity and you can change it up as much as you need to. But I, they were mega, mega impressive on that type of front. I'm not amazing at Warzone or I'm not amazing at first person shooters anyway, but this was a kind of a great, a great point in between to work with. So they were spot on. Uh, the remappable buttons, I can't, I don't like the positioning of these and they're too small. I wish they were paddles. I wish they were closer. If you've got small hands, you really are gonna struggle to hit these, I think, personally. I could be wrong, and maybe you've got huge hands, but these I really struggle with. They're the only thing really for me that as a pro controller with paddles or buttons is let down. I like the idea that they're tactical, but they call them ergonomic, and for me, they're just difficult to get to, and they're they're just tough to use. Even when I've used them for a huge amount of time, I've had everything mapped to them, just kind of get, kind of get around it. They're usable, but not great. Uh, what else? The Thrust Mapper app. It's pretty good for remapping buttons, changing dead zones, controller sensitivity, it was relatively easy to use. One thing I would say is that when you plug it straight into the PC, mine didn't work straight away and I went onto the Thrustmaster website, tried to get the app and the drivers for the controller and off the website, every time I clicked it, it had done nothing. So I found a third party site for the drivers in the app, which I'll link in the description below. If you do have any issues with it, say you watch this video and decide to buy it and then can't get it to work, then I'll leave a link to it below. And that worked fine, you just download it then it unplug and replug it, up, did a firmware update and then it was good to go. And since then it's been absolutely fine every time I've turned it on. So overall, Thrustmaster eSwap Pro, is it worth it? If you like Thrustmaster gear and you've kind of went through other controllers, you want to try something a bit different, you are somebody who loves this modular design and wants to make it a bit more personalized to you, I'd say go for it. It's worth it for the for the 125 if that's what you pay for it. Don't pay any more for it if you can get away with it. I don't think it's worth any more than that, really. Is there better controllers in this price point? Absolutely. Something like, th th what this is also missing is these two inside buttons that are inside the triggers on the Razor Wolverines and stuff. And they're kind of now become my go-to. And I think they should be the, the general go-to for extra buttons on a controller as well now. But if you like the look of it, it's probably worth it. If you've got the cash to buy this, do yourself a favor and get another controller. However, this is a good thing for Thrustmaster to be in the game because there aren't very many competitors in the pro controller game that aren't the ridiculous scuff, which I'm going to do a video on in a little while to explain why I'm not going to buy a scuff controller. But if you do still feel like this is something that would be useful for you, I will leave a link to it down below if you do want to purchase it. Leave a comment if you do have one or if you're thinking about getting one and let me know what you think. Leave a like. Uh, and if this has taught you anything or you've taken anything from this, don't forget to click that sub button. Get us to a thousand by the end of the year. And uh, as I say, any questions, let me know. Until next time, see you then.